and all the praise. Come on, we can do better than that. Yeah. Amen. It's a new year. Yeah, yeah. It's a new day. It's a new season. Glory. It's a new season. It's a new season. It's a new day. Fresh anointing. <laughs> well, I'm trying to tell you, I didn't wait till January the 1st to celebrate. See, when you got to get a new season, you got to prepare all year long. It ain't one day that makes the difference. It's what you've been doing before that day gets here. How many ready to shift? How many ready to go higher? How many ready to go deeper? Hey, Amen. Thank God for Bishop Apostle Anthony McCray. Hey, Amen. Our Apostle Pastor McCray, our Pastor. Hey, Amen. Thank God for them. Hey, Amen. Thank God for you. Thank God for my beautiful wife somewhere. Hey, Amen. She's in the house. She's back. She's getting me something. Okay. She's back there. Pastor, my wife is here. Thank God for her. Clap your hands for her. Thank God for my children. Some of my children are here. Isaiah Israel and Isabella and Junior is in the house. Junior is in the house. Amen. He's my oldest now. Yeah, he is. You the third? You the third, son. Gee, I humped it dumped there. I got so many. I, old mother, how, you know, I got a bunch of Okay, you the third one. So I got I got Sade, Michael, and then June Thaddeus. Michael Thaddeus and you. Boy, I tell you, look what the Lord has done. Go ahead and be seated. Look what the Lord has done. Thank God for all of you. Pastor Smith coming down with us. Amen. He preached for us this morning at Little Rock. He Told the church up, talking about a, a voucher. <laughs> Boy, I tell you the truth, we were good. Trusting in God. Yes, sir. Amen. Thank God for elect Lady Raven Smith here for us today. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Y'all flip the camera on my wife back over there. Flip the camera on let the world see my beautiful wife. Stand up, baby. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on up here. Come on up here. Hey, man, my Uncle Sammy, my Uncle Sammy, Uncle Jerry says it's a, it's a poor fog that won't praise his own pun. <laughs> if you don't praise it, somebody else will. Uh-huh. Ain't, ain't no other man going to tell her she's beautiful. I'm the one going to tell her she's They ain't going to be able to get her attention because I'm going to say everything that needs to be said. <laughs> All right, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. I'm trying to do better, y'all. I don't know about y'all. I'm trying to do better. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, you learn better. You want to what? Do better. <laughs> All y'all evangelists and prophets and everybody, elders and missionaries, thank God for you. Good to see you again. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, good to see you again. We were trying to come on Friday night, but it wasn't no service. But the Lord said through my son Israel, we, we, when we go into Bishop Church, he was talking about it all week, and he didn't know what I had in my mind to come Friday night. But God was out of the mouth of babes. I don't know what, what's all the reason why I had to be here, but I just know what God said. We just need to be here. Amen. It's good to fellowship. Amen. It's good to fellowship. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. I remember I was in other places. Amen. I was in other places that the end of that road was death. Uh, hallelujah. Phew. You know what? Today is a good day for deliverance. Today is a good day for breakthrough. If you want your deliverance today, you can get it today. Because Jesus is on the main line. Only thing you got to tell him what you want. 
He's a, he's a God that delivers. How many believe that on today? Uh-huh. All right. All right. Mark, the 11th chapter. Mark the 11th chapter. I'm finna jump down deep. I'm gonna jump quick. Then we going to work. We gonna pray. We gonna cast out the devils that need to be cast out. Be ready for it. We casting out today now. We gonna lay hands on the sick. We gonna lay hands on ourselves. And we gonna get healed in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Hey, I know the church that we get quiet when we talk, start talking like that. But see we, we can do it in Jesus name. My job for the rest of my life to get people back to believing in Jesus. That Jesus is alive and well. Jesus can do just what this word says he can do. We got to start back believing. It ain't, our, it ain't God's fault. It's our fault. We done got lazy. We done got lazy. The church done got microwave. We done got new age. But I grew up when they called on Jesus until something happened. Jesus. Subject on today. Speak to your mountain. Subject on today. You need to speak to your mountain. We're trying to get the pastors to do it. We're trying to get the prophets to do it. We're trying to get the evangelists to do it. I'm going to tell you some things God ain't going to let us do. You got to do. Because yeah. he gave you authority. Say prove it preacher. So I'm in Mark 11 right? So I'm going to show you something. Before I get there, I'm going to read something out of Mark 16. Watch this. And these signs shall follow them that what? That what? That what? These signs shall follow them that believe in my name, in Jesus' name, shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Huh? Y'all see that? Y'all see that? Y'all see that? They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall what? They shall what? They shall what? Who shall do this? The believers. Not the pastor. Not the prophet. Not the evangelist. The believers. How many believers we got in here today? <laughs> Uh-huh. You see how far we from it? He said, you supposed to do it. Uh-huh. Pastor, lay hands on me. This devil, you, he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. If you're a believer, you can cast the devil out your own self. Mark 11. These signs shall follow them that believe. Don't get quiet on me now. Yes, sir. Are you still a believer? Say, Lord, increase our faith. Father, help me to see me as who you say I am. That authority that you put in me, if you're a believer, if you got the Holy Ghost, you have that authority right now. It's in Jesus. <laughs> Trust in Jesus. Faith in Jesus. That Jesus is going to do it whether you fast or pray or not. Because everything you ain't got to fast and pray about. What you need to know is what Jesus say, what the Holy Ghost say, and that's what's going to work. But it ain't going to work for you if you don't believe that you can do it. Amen. If you say you can't, you ain't. You hear me? Yes, sir. We quote these scriptures, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. But we need to stop lying. Because when we get sick, we don't want to pray for ourselves. When we get sick, we lay out and stay home. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And when we get sick, we don't want to come to church. Because why? We don't have faith and trust to believe that God really can do it. Even when you're weak, if I can get two or three around me, I believe God can do something. If, I, if you can just drop me in the house. Huh? They had enough faith to take the roof off and say, if we can get them down where Jesus at, if Jesus is in the building, if Jesus is working in the ministry, I need to get where Jesus at. Sometimes we get weak and we can't do things on our own, but we got to have enough faith that if I can get where the fire is at, Jesus is going to move. Our God answers by fire. 
Mark the 11th chapter says in the 20th verse, then in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Y'all see that? Yeah. They was passing by and they happened to glance at the fig tree and seen it was dried up. But the problem is it shocked them. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. It shocked them that it was dried up. It amazed their mind. They said in the next verse, they, they want to get Jesus' attention. Peter, calling to remembrance, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou curse is withered away. It shocked him. It shocked him. Now, wait a minute. Why you say it shocked him? What well, shocked him was because he didn't see who he was walking with. He didn't realize what benefits he was walking with, who had the power he was walking with, it, so it shocked him. Because he thought that he was walking with Jesus, Jesus was just saying something and wasn't nothing going to happen. It shocked him. It's shocking people in the church because Jesus said, I'm a healer, and you shocked if you get healed. You get amazed if somebody get healed when you should say, that's our God. That's how he works. It shouldn't shock you. What shock you because you don't believe him. You ain't used to seeing it. It should be an everyday occurrence. It should be natural. Supernatural. Because we're a supernatural being. It should be natural that we see God cast out devils. Why? Because he said he's going to do it. And he said he's going to do it through us. If we believe. <laughs> they shocked. Peter said, I'm shocked. Jesus, now, I thought you was playing, Jesus. I'm paraphrasing. I'm bringing it 2022. Look, 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 apostle. You mean to tell me Jesus want to use me? I'm shocked. Um, you mean to tell me Jesus want to heal me today? Look at y'all looking at me. You're shocked. Because Jesus said he'll do it if you believe it. Ain't that right? Next verse, he said, Jesus, now lie, the master, the, behold, the fig tree which thy curse is withered away. Jesus answered and said unto him, unto them, have faith in God. Quit looking at yourself. It's not you can heal yourself. It's not you can cast out devils. It's not you can lay hands on the sick and they recover. He'll use you by your faith, but it's God that's going to do the work. You looking at your shock because you're saying, I can't do this. You'll never do it. But your faith in God, God will do it through you. But you keep looking at yourself. I ain't perfect yet. God can't use me. You'll never be used. God want to use you right now. Justification says, the law of justification says when you become saved, he already declared you righteous from the beginning. Sanctification is you going through a process to see the ending results. But he called your ending at your beginning. Justification. He wants to use us right now. But can we believe? People need healing and the church supposed to lay hands on them. But the church ain't believing like they ought to. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. You think we got to run, we got to shout, we got to fast 50 days before somebody get healed. No, baby, we got to get back to believing. It's power in Jesus. You don't take a church fool to get a healing. You don't take a church fool to get delivered. What it takes is believing in Jesus, that he's, get, he's equipped us. He's equipped us to do the work. It's a certain movie, my brothers and my sisters, I feel like my Baptist brothers now. It's a certain movie I used to love because I like action movies. I like mysteries. And it's a, it's a movie called Taken. And I love the, 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 the statement this man said. They took his daughter. He said, now, he told the man, he said, now, he told his enemy, he said, now, I give you a chance to give her back. But I'm going to tell you something. Over the course of the years, I've, I've acquired certain skills. Now, I'm giving you a chance to give her back. But if you don't give her back, you'll never live to see it. What he was saying is, what well, we got to get in the body of Christ, we got, we got a certain set of skills that God has given us. If we were to develop them, you got a certain set, you got a power pack in you that will tear up the devil's kingdom, but we don't want to use it. 
We always want to back up when all you pray. Now what you got to do? I'm tired of crying. I'm tired of begging. I'm tired of looking for folks to pray for me when God looking for me to pray for myself. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Don't you know you can get delivered, your own, you can deliver your own self? Sometimes I'm home on the keyboard and I'm playing, I'm worshiping God, and I'm praising God, and I get the coughing. I get the sweating. And you know what I'm saying? What's what it is? I just got to get in the presence and the presence of God, the fire of God, and get the impurities out of you. You can deliver your own self. You got to submit unto God. And then you can resist the devil. He got to go. Once we get in the presence of God, whatever's attacking your life, he'll start breaking it off. It won't be a shock to you. You say, oh, that's how my God works. That's how my God works. Thank you, God. I don't care what's going on in my life. I tell you what, if I can ever start worshiping, praising God, my God going to break it. I don't care what's going on. I don't care how bad I'm messing up. I, don't, I just need to get to Jesus. He, I, I'm not going to be shocked about it. Uh -huh. I'm be confident that my God is going to do just what he say. Just because he didn't do it today, I know he's still going to do it. Sooner or later, it's going to work in my favor. It's going to turn around for me. You hear me, Junior? I don't care what's going on. My mama taught me, always go to church. Always get into the presence. Why? You don't never know what God want to do for you. You might be messing up. You might be messing up, but the devil don't want you around the fire. He don't want you around the anointing. He don't want you to hear the truth. Is the truth going to set you free? You can come to church and don't have a mind to change, but when the word comes with power, it'll destroy to you. <laughs> 23rd verse, Mark 11 and 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall... Not doubt in his where? Heart. But shall believe that these things which he has said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. No, wait, 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 wait. See, you can get shocked right there because you say, wait a minute now. Wait a minute now, Father. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me when I pray? I can speak to the mountain that's against my life, and if I believe it, it'll move. Is that not what the scripture just said? He didn't say the preacher going to do it. He didn't say the apostle was going to do it. He didn't say your mama and him. He said you. He said us. He's, this book, when you look at it, it's talking to you individually. You mean to tell me I can speak to the mountain in my life and it's got to move if I believe it? Why are we getting shocked about it? Why are you shocked about it? Because you're shocked because you don't believe it. You don't believe it because it's not a natural thing in your life. See, you looking for miracles that happen instantly all the time, but it, it's a miracle to you because you don't get many. But it won't be a miracle anymore if it's an everyday occurrence. It's just a part of life. This just God. Preacher, what, what you mean? Why, why, how that happens? It's just how he is. This just is my relationship with him. You got what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, when I first met my wife, I had to, you know, I had to work on getting some sugar. You know what I'm saying? I had to work up to it. I had, you know, I had to talk up, talk into it, you know, ease on in there. Now I get sugar when I'm ready. That's a relationship with God. See, I, I had to work up to God, and, and every now and then I might get something. Every now and then I might get a miracle. But when I spend time with him and love on him, I can get what I want. I become the apple of his eye. Why? I belong to him. That's a relationship. That's a relationship. It's got to be a relationship that you know your God or yourself. So uh, Jesus told Peter, said, look now, Peter, just have faith in God, son. You tripping. 
You tripping because it's cursed. I told you it was going to be cursed. I spoke to it. If I said it, it's going to be. You tripping, Peter. Just have faith in God. You can do it, Peter. You can do it, Peter. Have faith in God. You pull up the book of Acts and guess what Peter was doing? Raising the dead. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give unto you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Why? He, Jesus left it on record, son, I did it. If you can believe it, you can do it too. He told us the same thing. We can do the same if we believe. 2023, let's go to work. We've been talking about it. Let's quit procrastinating. I got another big word done. Quit procrastinating. Quit being slowful. I'm talking to the body of Christ all over the world. We got to stop being slow and try to wait on somebody else to do when God said, I gave you the authority to do it yourself. All right. I'm going to speak to my mountain. Your mountain might be sickness. Your mountain might be poverty. Your mountain might be anger. Your mountain might be pornography. Your mountain might be fornication. Your mountain might be adultery. Your mountain might be whatever, rumors and gossip. Your mountain might be a lot of things, but you can speak to that mountain and make that mountain move out of your life in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, I'm not putting up with gossip no more. Gossip, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Because Jesus said, whatever I bind on earth, he'll bind it in heaven. I bind you, gossip. I bind you, lying, in the name of Jesus. And I lose truth on my life. I lose the word of God on my life. I am the righteousness of God. I don't care what's going on. I speak it upon myself. I curse this flesh that my flesh got to die. And I'm not going to be shocked when I walk back by and look in the mirror and what used to live is dead. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. What I'm going to do, I'm going to rejoice right now because I know sooner or later I'm going to look in the mirror and I'll be able to say, look what the Lord has done. Because he said, I got authority to curse this flesh. I command my flesh to die in the name of Jesus. Not only Peter looked at the tree. He said everybody that walked with him, they looked. So when you start cursing, you curse that tree, you put yourself up on the possession, up on a subjection. You curse that sickness. You speak to it. You tell that sickness to move every day. If it don't move the first day, every day, throughout the day, that's your declaration. You speaking to yourself. You speaking to your situation. You got to move. I'm not accepting no, no sickness. I, I know I got it, but I'm telling you by the blood of Jesus, by what the words say, I am healed in the name of Jesus. The same way I declare I'm rich, the same way I got to declare I'm healed. The same way I declare I'm going to get a house, the same way I declare I'm going to die from this sinful nature. I got to speak it and got to believe it, and I got to make that mountain move myself in Jesus' name. God is upset with the preachers, these fancy preachers, getting these people hooked on them instead of getting hooked on Jesus. They depending on the preacher. They bound down to all these preachers. They bound down to a ministry. They bound down to religion. They bound down to denomination. Baby, it's only one thing that can deliver you. That's Jesus. Say, deliver me, Jesus. And, and Jesus saying back to you, deliver yourself. <laughs> speak to your mountain. That's what he said right here. You speak to it. You speak to it and believe it's going to happen. You got attitude problems, just believe it. It's going to take place that God's going to straighten your attitude out. And see, then the key is what you feed will grow. And what you starve will die. And start of feeding your attitude, you feed yourself the word. And start quoting what the words say. I am the peace of God. I have the peace of God. I am holy. Huh? Yeah. I am the righteousness of God. And so you declare and you're building your most holy faith of what the words say. And then you don't, before you know it, what was living is dead. Uh -huh. 
Because faith has come alive. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Everywhere I go, I'm trying to tell everybody, ain't no, ain't number one star. His name is Jesus. Ain't number one king of king and one Lord of lords. His name is Jesus. So Jesus said, now, whatsoever ye say, if you believe it, it shall come to pass. You shall have whatsoever he said or she said. My question is, can we really believe it? See, we've been quoting this thing, but it's time to operate. It's time to function by the unction. It's time to function what the words say. You got to grab this thing. And when your child gets sick, and, and, and I'm not against medicine, give them the medicine, but you better get some oil and lay some hands. Why? Because, see, he said you have the power to lay hands on the sick and they recover. What I'm saying, it starts at home first. You get a headache instead of going, and, and I don't have a problem with you taking bare asthma, but get the oil and lay hands on yourself and speak to that mouth in the name of Jesus. See, you start with the simple things first. So when you get cancer or anything like that major happen, you already know God's going to do it because you've been exercising. We want to jump up and believe God that he's going to move cancer and never believe him for a cold. We want to jump from 10 pounds to 500 pounds. And then get mad why God ain't doing because your faith ain't at the level, baby. You ain't been exercising your faith. Why my business ain't flourishing? Because <laughs> you ain't believing. I'm going to be like Abraham. I'm through working. I got to believe. Working will wear you out, but when you believe, God will tell you a a secret, a a plan, and it will bless your socks off. Y'all hear what I'm saying? God told me something to say to one of my cousins, and and I looked at him as my cousin, but my my Holy Ghost said, respect him as a businessman. And so I changed how I spoke to him and respected him as a businessman like he respect me as a leader. Right. Next thing I know out the service, he don't wrote out a thousand dollar check. He's going to be the first one to sow into your food pantry. Why? Because, see, God will give you a plan that you ain't got to work for. He got houses that you ain't got to build. He got land that you ain't dig no dirt on. But we got to go out and believe God and walk in what he's saying, what God saying. 2023, what God say? <laughs> we should have been already walking in it, but we're behind time. That's right. uh-huh. What God say? I don't care what these bootleg preachers say. Come on, I don't care if they got 10,000, 20,000 members, but what God say? <laughs> what God say? 25th verse, I'm almost done. I'm hitting and run. Uh-huh. You know what? Anybody need deliverance? Anybody need a breakthrough? Anybody want something from God? Huh? Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. I ain't, I ain't playing. I ain't playing with you. I ain't playing with you. If you need something from God, we can get it today. We can get it today. Now, I ain't talking about tomorrow. I'm talking about today. You hear what I'm saying? That sent a service Wednesday night, suicide, dealing with suicide and people mind God delivered them that day. Why? Because they, they, heard the, they heard the witness. They heard the character witness. They heard me talking about Jesus. They heard me talking about he'll deliver. I told them how he would deliver me. They started believing in this Jesus. Come to the altar. Guess what? I told them, you tell them devils they got to go. You don't want them no more. You want Jesus. Guess what? They start coming out. Why? She took authority. You can take authority over your own self. Huh? So what a man thinketh within his heart, so is he. Today I believe I can be delivered. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I'm the preacher, and every time I preach, he breaks something off me. Every time I sing, I'm believing God to break something off me. Every time I pray for somebody else, I'm believing God he's praying for me because I'm believing I'm going to reap just what I sow. I'm believing I'm not perfect, but I know I'm on the way to perfection. So I'm 
as I pray for you, I'm believing God for a miracle in my life. Today, not tomorrow. I'm talking about today. I'm talking about break yokes today. I'm talking about if you need a healing, we talking about today. I'm not talking about if you don't do it, he'll do it tomorrow. I ain't talking that sentence right now. I'm talking about believing faith right now. Can you believe it? Can anybody believe it here today? That God will deliver me today, right now. That God will heal me today, right now. Whatever going on in my mind, God can break it right now. Whatever I need, God can supply it right now in the name of Jesus. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? It's going to be a test in a few seconds because it's going to be according to your faith. It ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm the messenger and I got faith with you. But you're going to make this devil move by yourself. It's important that you see that you can make the devil move. So when there ain't nobody else around and you're under attack, you'll know how to make it move every time. Once you find out God want to do it through you, every time you're not going to put your fist down. You're going to keep your fist up. Devil, I wish you. I'm telling you, devil, get out my face. I can't be cute with the devil. Oh, please leave me alone. Oh, please, devil. I'm so tired. No, get up out of my house. I burned you. And then get out my mind in the name of Jesus. Get out my mind. I'm not going to cry today. I'm through crying, devil. Get out my mind in the name of Jesus. See, I'm talking to somebody because they cry. They just go to cry and they don't know why they're crying. It's a spirit. But you have authority. I ain't going to. Uh-uh. I'm not going to be depressed today. Uh-uh. I'm not going to be depressed today. Devil, you're a liar. I bind you. I curse your work right now in the name. You spirit of infirmity, you suicide, you, you hindering spirit. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Go. For the word said you got to go. Self-deliverance. So when you come back to church, the pastors and the bishop and the pastor be looking. Good God Almighty, what happened? And you won't have to sing the song, I went to the church one night, my heart wasn't right. You would tell him I made an altar in my house. I made an altar in my heart. And I made an altar for myself, and, I, and God meet me at my altar. I finally see what the scripture said. If I, whatever I do in my closet, he's going to reward me openly. I'm getting in my own closet. I ain't talking about going somewhere and shutting the door. What I'm telling you, go somewhere and get by yourself, you and God, and you're going to run that devil out. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. When I go into the hotel room, when I walk in the door, sometimes I forget when I remember. I say, I bind every spirit that's in this place, that's been in this place. I command you to go out this room in the name of Jesus. I don't know who y'all been in there, but I know the devil been in there. And I'm going to sanctify in Jesus' name. Why? I got authority. You got authority. When you believe it. Y'all hear one? Y'all don't think like that, like that, huh? Go to a hotel, you don't be thinking. Just go in there, lay down. Wake up in the morning, look like you've been in the war. Why? Because you didn't take authority. Have visitors come to your house, take authority. Because whatever they're dealing with, they're they following them. And you got to take authority. They're not leaving them spirits in my house. I bind you. When you see them driving up, Satan, I bind you in the name of Jesus. You are not staying here. They're coming. You're coming with them. You're going to go back with them until they get ready. But you're not staying in this house. This is a holy ground in Jesus' name. Guess what? They can't stay. Because you're standing in authority. They can't stay. Because the word says so. Jesus said it. Look, boy, quit tripping. I cursed the root. It's supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be withered. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You look at yourself, you say, it's supposed to wither. You hear what I'm saying? You ain't accepting nothing else from the day on. I supposed to be healed. I supposed to be delivered. I don't see it yet. It's going to die. I, I bind you again tomorrow in the name of I curse you. Die in the name of Jesus. I'm going to stick with the word. I'm going to stick with what works. It's faith in God. Are y'all hearing me? Are you hearing me? 
It's time to take authority now. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. Ain't no more playing. You got to quit pity party with the devil. Uh-huh, I ain't playing, I ain't playing, I ain't playing with my children, I ain't playing with nothing moving. It's, we ain't playing. They go to school, we take authority, they come home with attitude, I'm playing, I got plenty of oil now. I got, I got some oil and got this oil and all I got. I got it all mixed up and I ain't playing while I'm finding out we can make that devil move and I ain't got to get mad about it. What I got to do is rise up in the authority. My son Isaiah started acting up in school, getting very bad. I was like, what in the world going on? I'm getting mad, frustrated, and everything. Then I finally come to my senses. He around all these different spirits. It ain't his fault. It's my fault because I'm the parent. I'm supposed to rise up in authority. And oh, boy, we was in Savannah, and it come to me. Oh, the anointing was on me, but the anointing was on somebody else, too. I said, go over there and lay hands on him. Uh, and you know, you get, you get what I'm saying? They went to laying hands and let, pouring oil, and next thing you know, everything started changing at the school. The school didn't change. The authority changed. It's still the same spirits at the school, but how we handle it changed. We put the Jesus on it. We put faith on it. We stand in our authority, and we're going to make that devil move. Y'all hear what I'm saying? We're not fighting against flesh and blood. A spiritual wickedness in high places. Pulling out every imagination of the mind. Y'all hear me? We're going to pull down every imagination of the mind in Jesus' name. Every imagination of the mind in Jesus' name. How you doing, sir? Your hair almost as good as mine. Good to see you. Good to see you. Keep on working on it. You'll get there. You'll get there, son. Just keep on working on it. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Keep on working on it, sir. Keep on working on it. You're going to get there. I said something about your hair because I'm coming at your head. Uh huh. Keep on working on it. You're working on a building. I see you're working on a building. I see. I see that you're working on your building. You're sincere about what you're doing, but you're having, a, you're having struggles. You, you, you <laughs> look like it don't want to break loose, but I'm telling you today, God said you already got authority. You just got to learn how to use it. Amen. You can have an M16, but if you don't go through the right training, you don't know how to shoot it. You just got a loaded gun, but you're going to kill yourself and somebody else too. But when you go through basic training, God will give you the skills that you need. Again, I say, God says, training. Uh-huh. This is the catch-22 that believers don't want to do. They don't want to be taught. They don't want to sit their behind down somewhere and let somebody teach them how. Even though you got the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost knows all things, but he's going to use somebody to instruct you, to teach you. Because he said, when you're, when you're born again, he said, be like newborn babes. Desire the sincere milk of the word that you might what? Grow thereby. Hebrews 5 says, the first principle of the article is God is to be taught. Huh? To be taught. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. Paul said, look like I got to teach y'all all over again. Because you get grown, you want to hear nobody. <laughs> y'all hear what I'm saying? I'm going through training. I'm the pastor. I'm the pastor. I'm supposed to do some more stuff. But here come, here you go, over there. This one. Y'all pastor, y'all bishop, y'all apostle. <laughs> I got the mic. I can talk a little trash can. <laughs> I want you to watch this. Watch this video. Have you heard or ever heard about this person right here? I want you to watch him. It, it, you might want to watch him. But I can be prideful and say, I don't need to watch that because I've been trained. I know a lot of stuff. I've been taught a lot of stuff that y'all ain't heard yet. But the ominous of having a teachable spirit, you'll armor yourself and check it out. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And boy, I begin to watch the video and my spirit man now flipped and took me to a whole nother level. Just by watching somebody that's on a roll what I know the Holy Spirit, that's where I'm taking you to. But what if I wouldn't have went and been obedient to watch, to listen, to be trained? I'm going to be still in the same spot in 23 as I was in 22. All because I didn't want to be taught.
I told y'all I don't have a problem against schools and education. I have a problem with how they're teaching. They're not teaching spiritual things. They're teaching Hebrew and Greek, but they ain't teaching people to follow the spirit of God and to live holy and the power that we have in the Holy Ghost. But we got to be trained. We got to be taught. The problem with the body, they don't want nobody to say, you know what? This, this is hard. People will leave the church. Well, this next thing I'm going to say, I don't want you to do nothing today. I want you to sit right there on that corner and pray. That's hard for church folk, especially spiritual folk, because they feel like ain't nothing going to be done if I don't do it. God bigger than you. We don't need, God don't need us. We need him. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I'm throwing some facts out there. So if you want deliverance, sometimes you got to go through a process for deliverance. Sometimes God will take you through a process, Jordan, and you get hard-headed and you miss your deliverance. <laughs> Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me now. Here come the apostle. Now, here you go. Here you go. It's switching on you now. It's switching. Here come the apostle. God tired of playing. He want us to get serious with him. He want us to get serious with him. So he can bring deliverance. So he can bring the healing that we need. Yeah. But can we get serious with God? Are y'all hearing me? Yes, Are y'all hearing me? Yes, sir. God ready to take us on a flight. Not for our benefit, but for the world. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me? Amen. Deacon Kennedy. There you are yet. How you doing? <laughs> Time to go on a flight. No more excuses. Let's go on this flight. On no more excuses. Yes, Let's go on this flight. Yeah. No more holding back. Let's go on this flight. Yeah. Whatever, God, ever, how you want to use me, let's just do it. Let's just go. Why? Because he want to show his glory in a mighty way through you. Yeah. He want to show his glory in a mighty way through you. He want to show his glory in a mighty I don't care what's going on. I don't care what's going on in mind. Let's take authority and let him show his glory. Yeah. This is the year he want to show his glory yeah. through you. Yeah. This is the year. Yeah. You can write it on the calendar. He want to do it. Facebook, I love you. That's it, y'all. That's it. We love you. So a seed in this ministry. Bless this ministry. Come on down here to Hinesville, Georgia. They got all the ways to give up there. I ain't got that fancy yet, but it was up there. Ways to give. Bless them in the name of Jesus. Bless this ministry. You can't beat God giving. No matter how hard you try. Why? He said if you give, he'll give it back to you. Why are you shocked when you're blessed? Because you don't really know that he, he meant what he said. He said if you give, he's going to give back to you. Shall men give back to you? Press down, shaking together, running over. We coming. Oh, look what I don't. God, it just blow my mind. Why? Because you wasn't expecting like that. You weren't really believing that God really will do just what he say. Yeah. If we do what he say. Facebook, we love you. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me tell y'all something. We got to get delivered. 